Thank you. It's, uh, I should have stayed on as the head of education. Uh, beautiful to listen to this. Um, we're in awful danger as a country, an awful danger. If we don't really, really understand that and work towards doing what is absolutely necessary, we, we you, your children and your children's children are not going to have a, a, good, sp a good space. So let me tell, try to give you a sense of how this has happened. And uh, when I speak about the past, I never speak about the past to blame. There's no, no currency in that at all. But the past helps you to understand what is now and how one might best respond to that. Uh, there is a, all of us who were born, who were, who had been born in, uh, in 1994, before 1994, on 27th of May, April, uh, we, were very we are very special. We were the first South Africans in a democratic country. We together had the responsibility to build the foundation on which all South Africans eventually uh, would, uh, would, would li live and work. And so um, the part of what we are asking of you is to consider that, how significant you are for the creation of this thing that, that the world holds in awe. What we've done as a nation to bring ourselves together in the way that we have, despite all of the difficulties, is something that is unprecedented in the world. And, uh, and so we can't lose it. And we're on the, on the road to losing it. And so we need uh, all of those with the, with the energy and the, and the will uh, to support us. Now, we're in the 21st century now. And the, we are faced with 21st century challenges. And one of the big problems we have as, an, as a nation is that we are still living also with the past in the sense of what the past didn't do that enabled us quickly to become a different country. Um, and I'll say a word or two about that in a minute. But so, so we, we have this, uh, this, this responsibility um, to, to try to um, understand that past, what that past has done, and how we must now all together create something majestic that people will not say one day they started off so well, they had so much going for them, and just look at them now. They missed the boat completely because they didn't understand what the challenges were and they could not give the, the, the best responses to that understanding. So because we're in the 21st century, we've got 21st century challenges, but we mix it also with the old. So while many countries like the United States and others have to make a, a long jump as it's, uh, the, econom the economies and all of those sorts of things change, we've got a triple jump because we still first have to deal with bringing our people to a particular level before we can join the long jump. And so we have a challenge second to none on the planet this, at this moment. And it's going to take incredible people to see us through. And my hope is that the history classes of 100 years from now will speak about those incredible people. Us, not by name, but us as a group and what we did in, an up, in, in, a, in a circumstance that looked almost hope, hope, hopeless and, and, and we seemed to be helpless, but we did this. Now, Per Dahlen speaks of 10 revolutions occurring simultaneously in the world today. That's why we're having so much difficulty. There's, there's turmoil everywhere. There's tension in every part of the world because we're undergoing these massive changes. So one of the changes, of course, is, is our demographic changes, 7 billion and, and growing. And then we've got the uh, com uh, community communication changes. There, there's a, there, there, we're now in a space where there is nothing that is secret. And what we could hold to ourselves in our own culture is now open for the world to, to, to deal with. And so we, we have to, got to come to terms with all of those sort of things. And there are 10 of those, he says. But any one of these is enough to bedevil any, any, any nation. All 10 together are a nightmare second to none. And yet we're in it. And this generation of South Africans have the honor or perhaps the burden of operating in that space where this incredible changes are, are taking place. And our response to that will determine the future of our, of our country. Our response now. And we can't delay this. We can't say, well, you know, because it comes, it doesn't come slowly like our parents uh, didn't have the kind of uh, transport that we had and it took uh, six months from Cape Town to Mtata. It comes in a flash. And are we going to be a kind of country that immediately we believe or sense that there is a change in the environment 
find the ways to put together the right people, engage with that change, and then speak to the nation. So this is what we must do. If we had done that, for instance, with HIV and AIDS, we could have, we need not have had the pandemic. But we didn't want to contest with it, so we pushed it, we pushed it away. Now, it, 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 and, and as a consequence of that, we have this incredible dilemma uh, that we now have. So how must one respond to these big challenges? Now, Samuel Taylor Coleridge wrote a poem, and he called it Work Without Hope. He was just de depressed, and he uh, didn't see any sense in anything. And he writes this poem, and it's a hugely, hugely uh, touching poem, and he ends it this way. He says, Work Without Hope draws nectar with a sieve, and hope without an object cannot live. You can't hope if you haven't declared the object. So what is the South African object? If your children were to ask you, Mama, Daddy, where are we going as a nation? What is that object that you would tell them is, is shared by all South Africans? It doesn't exist. The closest we've come is to the, uh, the plan. That's the closest we've come. The plan is, 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 a, is, a, is a, a sort of a, a, a frame. It doesn't tell you about, or can't tell you about, what actually must happen, and how it must happen, and who must do the happening. So we haven't had any discourse in our country at all about how do we survive, uh, transcend the past, how do we do survive into the future, and how do we use all of our talents to build this country to make it what it must be if uh, we are, our children are to honor us. So that's what he says. So let's look at one example. And again, I say, I say this, I, I touch on this simply because it touches all of us and, and, and it helps us to understand. Uh, the, what colonial South Africa experienced was Britain, uh, first the Dutch, then Britain, France for a little while, and uh, that was the colonial. So what, 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 we, what is a colonial object? What do they do? Why are they doing it? Well, simply, at its root, it's to find a place, occupy this place, extract what you can, and then go. That's what colonials, colonial leaders do. So they have that object. So every decision that they make is geared to support that object. Every decision. Now let's take what happens to us after 1945, and that's apartheid. And, and, and there was an object. What was that object? Well, the object was, in a crude sort of way, how to have people live in separate compartments, both uh, uh, in sp with respect to race and ethnicity, but for, for one of the group there to, have be, to, be, to be in command to a, to a great consent. That was the object. And to support that object, a lot of things had to happen, and decisions had to be made. And so we get the, 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 the Bantu stance created, because it supports that object. We get this idea that certain parts of the country are reserved only for certain people. Certain schools are reserved only, and you may not marry certain people. It's all part of a particular object. Now, the question is, was that a sensible object? I go back to the colonials. Was theirs a sensible object? Well, I think they won. Why? Because they did get out. Eventually, after all the diamonds and the beers were gone, and all the gold had been taken, they left. America left, and, and Britain left. And they left us in 1994, say, yeah, we are so grateful for what you're doing, and we bless you, and we're sitting with what? We've got to dig three kilometers into the ground to get gold. That's what they've got, because they've taken up all of that on the surface. So they, they, their object uh, was, was one that... But the other object did not survive, because it couldn't. One-tenth of the people could not forever dominate the whole. It should have been clear right from the beginning, if you'd really sat down and thought about it and say, that's the wrong object. And so we, we are now trying to, 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 uh, to, to uh, cre create the, uh, the forces that enable us then to deal with that. So there we are. And so what happens with respect to the schooling thing? Well, in 1950, the per capita, um, the per capita uh, amount for white children was 1,000 rand. For, colored, for Indian children, 550. For colored children, 280. And for black children, 140. Now let's just look at the demograph demography, demography and, and get a sense then of what that meant. It meant that 90% of the intellectual power of this nation was not going to be invited into the pro process of, of, of good education. That's what it meant. It, as a decision was made to exclude 90% of the geniuses of this country from participation in its life. And how do you, on doing that, expect that this can endure? It can't endure. And so here we are today with this problem. Because when we arrive in 1994, what have we got? We've got about 10 or 15% of South Africans who are middle class and have all of the understandings of what that means, schooling and everything else. And the rest are, 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 are poor. But this is, the, this is the challenge, this is the 
problem, and this is something our government ought to have explained to our people so long ago, and I, I, I did as head of education, explained to them, the, most of the schools in this province, and almost in every school there was an understanding of it. Just to take, let us take that sum again. We've got one, one group of the, of, the, of, the, of the ten, let's have a group of ten, and one group of the ten um, has, a, has, has, has a billion dollars, has a million dollars, one group of that ten. The other nine, nine of that ten have nothing. And so this group with the, with the, with the million, they do all sorts of, kinds of great things, they build some good things, they get good, good schools and all of those sorts of things, and the others are all just milling around and trying to, 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 make, them, to make things go, trying to live. And then we find we reach 1994, and the, and the Constitution says, no, 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 you've got to do this and, and, and divide this equally. Now, the ones who had, have the million have the belief that in education, the, the system will support that level. The system will support that level of education. But remember, that's being done with the, with the one million. That what they see is being done with the one million, and the rest here have got nothing. Now, if you add that nine to that one, nine to the one, now you've got ten. Now let's say the whole story again, I'll just to give you the sum again, sum again. The one has got t ten, the one has got uh, f uh, two, two and a half, let's say that's the colored and the Indians, I've made the, add them together, and Africans have, have one. So how many whites are there? They're one, that's one ten. Uh, how many col uh, 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 Asians, uh, the, the coloreds and, 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 uh, and Indians, and that's uh, for half, uh, that's 10% uh, uh, as well. And how many black South Africans, that's 80%. Now, if you give then the, the one, the one, the, the, the ten, the, the, the one who has ten, uh, I'm, getting this, I'm getting this a little bit muddled. There, there is the, mil the million there, the million that is being used, and now that million must be shared equally amongst all ten. But the expectation of all of those are that they will all go and live at the level of the million. That's the expectation. But now you've got to divide that million amongst ten people. And so when you do that, it ends up not with uh, uh, ten, uh, not with uh, uh, nine, not with eight, not with seven, when you divide it. It actually ends up with one and a half. So our starting point is one and a half times what the, the black students actually received. In, in, under party. That's the starting point for all of us. Now if you understand that, then you know what our job is. If we want all South Africans to rise to a different level, the, what, well, the first thing we've got to do is to be the most educated country in the world. Because education is going to help us to, to develop the competences to make it possible for us to engage with others and, and increase the fiscus. But if you don't do that, that even if you take the, 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 the million and you divide it by ten, it's only a hundred thousand. That's all it is. And so how do you create then the kind of schooling that you had there with 100,000? So that's the challenge that we sit with in South Africa today, to have a schooling of great level of, of, of competence and, 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 and with all of the, the schools and the, and the playgrounds and the books and everything. But the, but the fiscus cannot support that. And so we have all got to accept that we're going to live in a country for a long some time till where we must make sacrifices. And that was, should have been the big message in 1994. This, for this generation, for this generation of South Africans, it is a 20 or 30 or 40 years of sacrifice to build the, the foundation. But that's not what happened. Our constitution says you have a right to a, a home. It's law that you have a right to a home. With what money? With what fiscus? So it's another, um, uh, 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 another instance of nonsense making. You can't promise people that they're all going to get that, that, that million if you don't have it. And that's exactly what we've done. So what have we got now in our country? We've got everybody feeling very unhappy. Those who had the million are unhappy because of how things have changed for them. Those who expected that they're going to go uh, to get more, especially the colored community, who expected that it would rise from, from two and a half to ten, uh, they find themselves uh, getting one and a half. And they can't understand it. Good God. Nobody's explained it. So there's been no discourse in this country about the future of this country, what is possible and what isn't possible, and how we must all work together. Now the school is at the center of all of this. And chap called Goodlad said the following. He said that the school is the, is the largest um, um, place for, 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 for development. Uh, it's, not, it's not the schools in an area. It's not the circuit, it's not the nation, it's the school. Because this school is different from that school. So if you want to really 
If we want to have a chance at all of transcending the, that past and getting all of our people into good education, we have to ask the schools, giving, making great sacrifices, to really, really put all of their energy and all of their strength into the process of helping this country to understand why knowledge matters so much and we're dead in the water without it, but it's possible for us to achieve that. And that's why we're asking you. This principle is that battle, and that principle was battling. They now see the light. In their own communities, they now have gravitas. They are people to be, to be looked upon and, and admired. And all of the damage that was done between 1976 until 1994, when we thought that success for us would come through destroying another bit of senselessness, we destroyed education from 1976 to 1994. And so now we've got to build all of that, we've got to get it back. And it can only be got back with principles, their supporters, and the kind of support that you can give them. Thank you.